Central bank digital currencies and stable coins have been a key talking point here when it comes to the digital asset space at the World Economic Forum. At the forefront of those conversations is Thomas Moser, who is an alternate member of the governing board of the Swiss National Bank. He joins me now. Thomas, great to have you join us on Coindesk Television. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So you were on a panel discussing central bank digital currencies. What is the Swiss National Bank's position on central bank digital currencies? So we are certainly doing a lot of experimentation and work in this area. But the position has been that, that uh, we say that for a retail CBDC at this stage, we do not have any plans to issue a, a retail CBDC because we do, at least for Switzerland, at this time not see a need for a retail CBDC. We are uh, looking more seriously into wholesale CBDC because we have in Switzerland the digital exchange already live, so it's the uh, six digital exchange. And uh, there, of course, we do experimentation with uh, wholesale CBDCs for payments between banks on that, uh, on that exchange, which is uh, blockchain based. OK, so you do see the value of central bank digital currencies and the technology behind it therein just for banks for now. Why not for retail? So retail is more complicated than wholesale because retail CBDC would be really a new form of money that's not yet available to the public. We have banknotes, so that's central bank money available for a retail customer, but not in digital form. Uh, retail customers uh, currently pay with uh, commercial bank money. And so the question really is how important will blockchain technology become for retail trade, for, for retail sales? And then the question is, do we have uh, private money, commercial bank money there, stable coins, for instance, or do we need a retail CBDC? And that need is at least at this stage not that clear. We see in China that they are experimenting with a retail CBDC, yeah. but you don't see people in Switzerland for now using that? Yeah. No, I mean, it would, pos would be possible to do it, but the question is, uh, should the central bank have a role in retail payment and what role? I think that's a very old question. And so far, the, the, the division of labor has been that digital payments are done with private money, with bank deposits, and, uh, and um, only banknotes are used for, for retail payments. So if we, as a central bank, start going into the dig digital payment area for retail, then I think a lot of things have to be clarified. What is the role of the central bank? What is the role of the commercial banks? It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's not possible, but it's, it's certainly more complicated than a wholesale CBDC. All right, so where are you in the process of developing a CBDC in Switzerland for banks, between banks? Yeah. And I understand you're working with David Chom, who is the godfather of cryptocurrency. Exactly. So we have done several experiments on wholesale CBDC together with six digital exchange and that works. So I think from a technological point of view, uh, all the questions are solved. There are still some issues on, uh, I guess, scalability, which would have to be tested, but we know how to do it. And we have uh, also uh, proven that we know how to do it. There are some governance issues remaining, like who is responsible for what on a blockchain uh, and, and some, some legal issues uh, in that context. But uh, currently we have uh, two very interesting projects. One where we uh, use a decentralized exchange to exchange wholesale CBDC with the Banque de France and the Monetary Authorities of Singapore. We build a decentralized exchange to do that. So we want to see how we could uh, include elements of decentralized finance to lower costs. And then the project that you mentioned with uh, David Chaum, that's really just a prototype for a multi-purpose CBDC. It could be retail, it could be wholesale. What we are really interested there in is uh, quantum security, uh, privacy and scalability. For, for And the scalability will be even more important for retail than for a wholesale CBDC. Quantum resistant, so that is a lot of forethought in there. Yeah. Tell me a bit about that thought process in terms of uh, you know really predicting and forecasting the future. So there was a lot of progress recently on quantum computing. I mean, we have a claim that, uh, that it already uh, is uh, available to break uh, standard cryptography, which, which at least in theory, there are papers out there. I think in practice it hasn't been proven yet, but it's certainly something that uh, central banks should think about, uh, something that could come uh, rather quickly. So that's 
a main reason why we look into that. And I think there are different ways how you could make uh, a CBDC quantum resistant. Uh, and that's exactly what we want to look into in this project. You also mentioned a decentralized exchange. Tell me a bit about that because you know, a lot of folks actually don't understand DeFi. Yeah, so in a, in a classical exchange, you have a, a order book where you match a seller and a buyer. And with decentralized exchange, that's not the case. Basically, you, you trade with a smart contract and you use so-called liquidity pools uh, that, that um, where, where you take these uh, coins out. Who would be out. the liquidity pools in, in this scenario? So in this scenario, the, the three participating central banks would provide these uh, liquidity pools. And then, so there would be a Swiss franc pool, there would be a Singapore dollar pool, there would be a euro pool. And uh, for wholesale CBDCs, we would, we would feed these pools and then the central banks can exchange with these pools for cross-border payments. So Swiss franc can be exchanged against euro and vice versa through a decentralized exchange. Would it be decentralized if the liquidity providers were limited? In what sense limited? The liquidity providers of the decentralized exchange. Limited in the sense that they... Can anyone become a liquidity uh -huh. provider or is it only No, a at this stage, that the, the way we set it up, it would only be central banks. So it's a wholesale CBDC and then possibly banks that uh, who have uh, accounts with central banks, but not retail customers. At least that's the setup that we are, we are experimenting with. Do you with. have a timeline for this? We intend to publish a report mid-year, hopefully for the, uh, the Point Zero Forum. Uh, in Switzerland in June, and the other one, the project with David Chaum, the target is uh, Q3 of this year. Wow. <laughs> when you're looking at uh, other aspects of the crypto marketplace, we've got DeFi, which we, we mentioned. We have DAOs and NFTs. How does the Swiss Na National Bank regard those technological developments? So the technological developments are clearly of interest. Also, uh, as it shows, we are trying to incorporate interesting aspects of DeFi into our own uh, thinking and architecture. But uh, in terms of NFTs, uh, stablecoins, we are uh, merely monitoring. We are also not the regulator. So in Switzerland, we have a separate regulator, FINMA. So from that point of view, we are just monitoring, as you say, the technology because they are interesting uh, new developments, that uh, innovative developments that might be of use for us. Mm -hmm. So we are clearly interested in these uh, in these um, innovations. I saw that in your public request for comment when you were in the process of um, deliberating on a CBDC. Forty percent of people who responded were concerned about privacy concerns. So how is that being implemented? in the process of creating a Swiss CBDC. Yeah, no, that's exactly one of the uh, focus topics in this uh, project Dubion, it's called, this uh, eCash uh, architecture with David Chaum. Uh, because as you say, I think privacy is important. People care about privacy. They do not always uh, seem to act as if they care, but I think if people know what uh, is done with their data, then they care about privacy. Uh, and also I think for a central bank it's important. As a central banker, I do not want to have this data. Uh, I prefer not to have this data. The difficulty of course is to have, uh, to have a privacy that is really secure. And, uh, and on the other hand, how do you square that with uh, regulation, especially uh, anti-money laundering uh, regulation? Well, I'll, I'll paint for you a scenario. So when the internet came, everyone praise the democratization of information. With blockchain, people are praising the democratization of finance, potentially. But we learned with the internet, it kind of went the opposite way in terms of all of our data and information became concentrated among a centralized group of companies. Could that happen with blockchain? Yeah, absolutely. That is a possible scenario. And that's why I think it is important to look into these privacy issues. And uh, as you say, with a CBDC, of course, the fear that uh, government uh, would have all payments data, uh, that's clearly something some people are worried about. Uh, and the, the project that we are looking into is uh, really private, not just pseudonymous. It would really allow you to make private payments. Uh, there would be no data 
collected, not mm -hmm. by the central bank, not by any central uh, institution. What is the use for that? Is your knowledge proofs? Or? No, blind oh. signatures. Oh, okay. And now we try to make them quantum proof. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> One other question I want to ask you was uh, the, this, uh, the Basel Committee uh, recently came up with the, uh, I guess, working guidelines to limit the amount of cryptocurrencies that banks can hold, I believe, to about 1% to 2%, and they have to hold, I guess, about 100x um, to capitalize and, and I suppose, uh, hedge against that. What are your thoughts on that? So as I said, I'm not in the regulatory business as a central <laughs> banker, but I mean, this is exactly one of the reasons why you might want to have CBDCs, because if you use stable coins, I mean, I'm talking now mainly about stable coins, uh, if you use them for payments, that's exactly what, what happens. You have a counterparty risk and you would have to underlie that with uh, capital. If you have a CBDC, you do not have the counterparty risk. So that could exactly be one reason, for instance, why you would like to have a CBDC instead of uh, private money, stable coins, cryptocurrencies, because it's uh, cheaper. So would you prefer that there not be, I guess, retail or uh, bank involvement in uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? See, that's, I mean, in the end, it, these are risky assets and, and I guess it's up to the banks to, do, to decide and the regulators uh, how they want to treat that. So here I don't really have a view on, on this. And if um, the Swiss National Bank is not for a retail CBDC just yet, are they, I guess, in favor or okay with people using stable coins? I Private guess stable coins. coins would have to take this role because you need to have a means of payment on the, uh, on the blockchain. That's why uh, stable, where there is a demand for stable coins. I guess the issue there is that you will see increasingly uh, regulation on stable coin providers. Uh, and as they are increasingly regulated, I think the question will come up, should not uh, commercial banks issue stable coins? They would be in a very good position to do that. And I think what's really holding them back yet is that the issue of uh, KYC, know your customer, and anti-money laundering regulation is not solved yet. Because uh, for that we would need an identity layer, uh, either on the blockchain <laughs> or, or in the wallets. And I guess that's what people are working on. All right. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. That was Thomas Moser, an alternate member of the governing board of the Swiss National Bank.